Hello and welcome to another episode of From the Beginning here at Heavenward Thinking. Today, we're starting Genesis chapter 12, The Call of Abram. So we're going to get into the very long story of Abraham, and we're going to see how God was faithful to Abraham and carried out his promise, and how it took some time, and how uh, it can relate to us, and how we need to be faithful to the Lord. As we know, we've seen, and we've talked about before in the previous chapters, God is always going to be faithful to us. And just as Abraham had to wait for the promise of God, sometimes we have to wait in our own lives. So let's get right in and read it, starting in verse 1 of Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was seventy-five years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people that they had acquired in Haran. And they set out to go to the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak of Morah. At that time the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on, still going toward Negeb. Now there was a famine in the land, so Abram went down to Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was severe in the land. When he was about to enter Egypt, he said to Sarai his wife, I know that you are a woman beautiful in appearance, and when the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife. Then they will kill me, but they will let you live. So you are... So you are my sister, that it may go well with me because of you, and that my life may be spared for your sake. When Abram entered Egypt, the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. And when the princes of Pharaoh saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And for her sake he dealt well with Abram, and he had sheep, oxen, male donkeys, male servants, female servants, female donkeys, and camels. But the Lord afflicted Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say, She is my sister, so that I took her for my wife? Now then, here is your wife. Take her and go. And Pharaoh gave men orders concerning him, and they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. So we see many different things here in Genesis chapter 12. First, we see the calling of Abram, how God spoke to Abram and made him a promise. And we see that right away in Genesis chapter 1, where it says, The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. So we see this call of Abram, how he had to step out in faith and do something extraordinary. He had to leave behind his uh, his upbringing place where he was from the land of Ur. He had to leave behind everything he was familiar with, and he had to go to a new country. Now, he took along his family, his possessions, and all those things, so he wasn't leaving everything behind to follow after God, but he was leaving behind the things he would have been familiar with and been comfortable with to somewhere he didn't know where he was going. God didn't give him a road map of here's exactly where I'm taking you and here's exactly when you're going to get the land and here's all the details. And we see later in Scripture that it was a very long time before all the promise was fulfilled to Abram. So we see that this is important for us as Christians, sometimes we have to step out in faith. Sometimes God calls us to leave things behind and move into a new season of our lives and move to where he is calling us to do a specific thing. He has a specific plan and purpose for each and every one of us. We have to be willing to step out in faith, not always knowing all the details, usually not knowing the details, and we have to be willing to be faithful to God and follow him where he's leading us. And that's what Abram did here. And, and we see that he was willing to do what God asked. And we see the incredible promise that God made him, that he was going to make him into a great nation. And it's important to point out here that at this moment, Abram had no son. He had no heir. So there was going to be no one to carry on his legacy that was his own flesh. It was going to be a servant that would have had that responsibility to carry it out at this point. So we see the miraculous a power of God that he's promising something that hasn't even come into fulfillment and that seems impossible. And we'll see even later on how it becomes even more impossible. And yet God makes a way, makes the impossible possible. 
And we see that the blessing isn't just going to be for Abraham. We see that he's going to be great and he will be a blessing. He's going to bless those who bless Abram and those who dishonor, God will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So it relates to us in this chapter. We can see how we are able to apply this in our own lives because we have been blessed through the seed of Abraham and how we have a Savior, Jesus Christ, and he is the ultimate blessing to all of us. So we all share in this story. And when we look at the New Testament and we see that uh, the children of Abraham are those who are born of the Spirit, those who are walking according to the Spirit, not just the flesh, uh, that we are Abraham's heirs also, not just the Israelites uh, in flesh and blood. So it's important that we not just cast this story aside as an Old Testament story, but we see that it's super relevant. It's very important in the New Testament, and it's just as important today to see the blessing that God caused through Abraham. And we see in the next section here, we see that Abram did what the Lord told him to do. It talks about his family going and where they went. And, and once again, we see in verse 7, the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So we see that the Lord is giving a reminder of his promise to Abram already in this chapter. We don't know exactly how long it was uh, that he traveled to get to the land, but the Lord is already reminding him of his promise. And we're going to see that again and again in the story of Abraham. And it's a reminder for us as Christians that the Lord constantly reminds us of his word, his promise to us. We have been given his word, the scriptures. We should probably take a look at it more often because... If we dig into scripture, we're going to be reminded daily of the promises of God. It's so important that we seek out the Lord through prayer and scripture each day because he's going to remind us of his promises, of his faithfulness to us, just as he did to Abraham here in this chapter. And then we get to verse 10, and that takes us to another section. It shows us uh, how Abraham goes from a high level of faith to uh, compromising a little bit and not doing a very smart thing when he goes to Abraham and Sarah go to Egypt and they lie about their relationship. They don't explain to Pharaoh that they are married and it creates a problem. Uh, it seems like there's a blessing at first. It says that Abraham was treated well and given all these animals and servants and all these riches. Uh, but then there's a problem at the end where the Lord afflicted Pharaoh with great plagues because of Sarai, Abraham's wife. So it's important that we see in this chapter uh, an important point of application for us, we should be uh, truthful and not tell lies, not to be half telling the truth, not be dishonest, and we need to be truthful. And that's a, a point that is going to be shown throughout Scripture as we continue to move forward. We have to do what is right, and that is telling the truth, not lying. When we lie uh, to, to cover ourselves, uh, then we're not relying on God. God would have been faithful to protect Abraham. He should have trusted in God, not in his own cunningness. And, and we see throughout Scripture that whenever we rely on cunningness, whenever people rely on their own strength, that usually goes south very, very fast. We need to rely on God and his faithfulness to us and his awesome might and power. He doesn't need our help in that. So if we're just faithful to the Lord and do uh, what is right and walk in obedience to him, be truthful, be authentic, not uh, be dishonest and not uh, seek to cover and protect our own selves, uh, we need to rely on God to do that. He's always faithful to do that. He will always help us in that. We shouldn't try to make things happen on our own. We'll see a few chapters later how another time when Abraham and Sarah try to do something on their own, it goes south very fast, just like this story. So it's important that we see these things in Scripture. We see how they relate to us in our lives. We need to be uh, seeking this every day, how scripture applies to us today. Uh, we don't have to change it to make it relevant. No, we need to just understand how important God's word and God's authority is in our daily lives. So I hope you've been challenged by this passage, uh, that you'll join us again next week for another episode of From the Beginning, here at Heavenward Thinking.